Thank you and welcome to another edition of The Tongue with Dr. Mike. We have been going over a lot of things, a lot of topics, and we're going to just keep plugging along. So keep hanging in there. Stay with me. You're doing great. Um, pretty soon, if you haven't already, the TheTongueSpeaksLife.com. That will be up and more functioning. Right now, it's very preliminary, uh, but you will be able to go on there, get some of these messages. It'll be very interactive. You'll be able to get a hold of me. You'll be able to submit requests. You'll be able to do a whole bunch of things. Um, uh, so hang in there. It's coming. I have um, a couple things we're working on now, like partnering with Cure International. If you are not aware of what Cure International is, uh, please Google that. Uh, that's a, no a Christian nonprofit organization that's based in Michigan. Um, they they focus on providing medical medical care to children who suffer primarily from orthopedic and neurological uh, conditions. So, I mean, the mission statement for them is healing the sick and proclaiming the kingdom of God. It's a great organization. Uh, I've been a part of them for a long time. Uh, the people running it are are excellent, and there will be soon a direct link on the TongueSpeaksLife.com where you can click on that link, go right to their website, uh, donate uh, directly to them. Uh, great organization. Read about it. I'm going to be talking about it a lot, but um, go to it. Check it out, right? So why the tongue speaks life? We've gone over, you know, the power, the book of, of Proverbs. Uh, the tongue has a power of life and death in it. Um, I like to share a little bit more every time. So uh, another book of the Bible, First Peter, talks about uh, the tongue as well. It says, whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Sounds normal, right? Sounds easy. Sounds simple. But how, how easy is it? How simple is it? Um, it? It's obvious it's this is a huge topic about controlling your tongue. And it's written all, all throughout the Bible. It's, it's a tough thing to master. Uh, like it said, it's full of deadly poison. And we can tame wild animals. We can't tame our tongue. It's crazy. But let's jump back into the, book of the, the, the books of the Bible. We've done uh, mainly... Old Testament, and we're going to stick there for a little bit longer, uh, just because it's a little bit more relevant to where uh, we're going with this outline at the moment. Um, so we've already done the book of Esther in the Old Testament. The very next book of the Bible is Job. It's J-O-B. For those of you that aren't familiar, it looks like Job. It's pronounced Job, right? So uh, 18th book of the Old Testament is Job, right? So what is Job about? Uh, the book of Job is um, it's very interesting. It helps you understand uh, like the following thing. It helps you understand that Satan can't bring destruction upon you without God's permission. So, so that is a tough topic and a tough idea to wrap your mind around. Right, so he can't he can't bring financial physical destruction upon you unless God permits it to be, to to happen. Right, so God has the power over Satan, what he can and what he cannot do. It's beyond our human ability to understand the whys behind all the suffering in the world. the The wicked will receive their just dues. We can't always blame suffering and sin uh, in our lifestyles. We can't always. Um, suffering sometimes is allowed in our lives to purify us, to teach us, to test us, uh, to strengthen our soul. Uh, God remains enough, and that's the, the key throughout that. He deserves and requests our love and our praise in all circumstances in your life, right? So what happens to Job? So Job opens with the scene in heaven, and uh, Satan comes to accuse Job before God. So he insists that Job only serves God, because God protects him, and he seeks God's permission to test Job's faith and loyalty to God. So God grants his permission. Uh, he does set boundaries on it. Uh, and that makes you wonder, it makes me wonder, uh, it makes a lot of people wonder, why do the righteous suffer, right? This is a question that um, that is raised. Uh, if you follow the story, Job loses his family, his wealth, his health, um, he has friends come over to try and understand what's going on. They tell him it's 
uh, his suffering is because of the sin in Job's life. Um, Job, throughout all of this, remains devoted to God. Um, another friend comes and tells Job, humble yourself and submit yourself to God and purify your life. Right. So finally, Job questions uh, God himself and learns a valuable lesson about the sovereignty of God and his need to totally trust in the Lord no matter what's going on. Right. So flash forward to the end of Job. Job is then restored to happiness, to health, to prosperity beyond his earlier state when um, before he was allowed to be te- to be tested. Right. So it's it's a great, great book of the Bible for people that are going through um, a, a lot of things in their life. And, you know, when I was going through some severe depression and severe woe is me <laughs> areas, right, which we all have. Um, yeah, that book is very powerful. And I challenge you to turn your pages to that book, start reading it, ask some questions, start to get to understand, you know, and, and we're going to use that's That's a great book to do that for. But uh, I have another book, um, Nahum chapter one, verse seven. And that verse says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. Right. So grab your pen, write these verses down, check them out after this, uh, when in your free time in your devotion time, Philippians chapter four, verses 11 to 13 Psalms chapter 62, verse five through eight James chapter three, verse 17 Lamentations chapter 3, 22 to 26, Joel chapter 2, verse 1, and Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 2. All right, so go on the website, read those verses, reach out to me, ask me questions, uh, ask me for opinions, tell, tell me what's going on, right? So as we chug along here, um, you know, certain things in life happen, birthdays, graduations, you know, a Mother's Day, Father's Day, we've gone over all, you know, every occasion is a unique time for celebrating something different, but all together, right? So spend these times with loving family and friends. Remember that your Heavenly Father loves you enough to give up His only Son, Jesus, just for you. So for all the fathers that listen to the podcast, imagine how difficult it would be to give up your child for a murderer or a rapist or someone who doesn't deserve to live. Would you exchange your child's life for these individuals uh, that that hate you? Uh, You can't begin to fathom God's love for you because it is without limit or without bounds, right? So thank you, God, for that. And and for us to try and understand the depth of that love is is really difficult. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. Endure hardship as discipline. God's treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? This is the this is the one. Uh, well, it's one of the verses that deals with long suffering and harsh, hardship. Um, so last month we spoke about you know hard times and overwhelming overwhelming circumstances that you may face in life. Uh, do you ever find yourself saying, "Why me, Lord? Why now? What have I done to deserve this? It should be somebody else, right?" Realize that you're being treated as God's child, and everything that's being done in your life is shaping tomorrow's outline. You won't see it all the time, and it does seem overwhelming, but your faith and the Holy Spirit will guide you through what must, what you have to, to get through and endure, right? So you are not given more than you can handle. Start looking at yourself as a stronger individual. No one can handle what you can handle. It is meant for you alone right? It is meant by God to shape you. At times, it may be so that you can relate to others and help others. Other times, you won't understand what it means until way later, years later. Does that seem like a waste of time to you? Do you think it's one thing after another and it never stops? Take happiness in your suffering. Yeah, I know, that's hard to say, but, uh, you know, it's hard to do too. Trust me. Thank God for your everyday things. Remember, you are being shown a number of things in the meantime. You might not know it now, but your endurance is shaping up for more things to come. The book of Romans tells us that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. You have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. 
God does not allow you to be tempted more than you can bear and always provides a way to escape your temptation. Stand firm in the fact that, yes, your hardship is not pleasant, but it is creating in you something more valuable than you can imagine at the present time. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Even if you think that he's forgotten you, be strong. Realize that this will not be forever. You know that you will overcome this. Realize your power and your worth, right? Very powerful words. Uh, very, very important things to realize as you're going through uh, perhaps a, a very uh, difficult time in your life. Discipline is never easy, right? But that is what shapes us. That is important to keep in mind. So as we continue, we're going to jump back into our timeline. We've talked about, and we're going on through uh, end times, right? Talking a little bit about it. We're going to go through an old timeline. We're going to go, once we're completed through that, we're going to get to the new timeline, where what has happened in the span of this last decade, where, where we're at now, and what, what's going on in the future, right? So we've gone over birth pains. We've gone over signs to watch for. We, we talked about false prophets. We talked about the Jews returning to Israel, right? Now let's talk about the rise of Russia, right? So the book of Ezekiel talks about Russia a lot. Um, and, and it says that um, after many days, it'll be summoned. In the later years, uh, people will be coming into the land uh, that, is re- that is restored. The, the inhabitants have been gathered from the nations to the mountains. Um, but it, it's, it's time. Russia, for this to take place, will have to become... A, now, remember, this is 10 years ago. Russia will have to become a strong nation with a strong military. So let's flash forward to where we are right now. How strong is Russia? How great is Russia's military? Right? So we're going to get more into Russia a little bit later, but we're going to go on to technology for the mark of the beast. So jump into Revelation chapter 13. And he causes all, the small and great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that... No one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right? So how close are we? I I see it, um, and I'm not saying this is it, but look how how restricted we are if you're not vaccinated right now, right? And, And, you know, you can't go to certain areas right now. You can't travel to certain areas right now. So how soon will this next layer of, of restriction be welcomed in and be so easily accepted worldwide? On May 10th, 10 years ago, three members of a family in Florida became the first people to receive a biochip implant. Each device was made of a silicone called a Verichip, which is a, a, like a small radio transmitter, the, no bigger than the size of a piece of rice, and it's injected under your skin. It transmits a, a, a unique personal ID number wherever it is within a few feet of whatever receiver they have. Verichip's maker described it as a miniaturized implantable radio frequency identification device, and it can be used in a variety of, of applications, security, emergency, healthcare, you name it, right? Is that biochip the mark of the beast? Uh, is it sign of Antichrist? We, we, we don't know that, right? Uh, what, what's significant is that this technology is becoming more and more rapidly acceptable. It's significant that the people are being softened to the idea of a mark or an implant as a means of maintaining security, providing medical information, uh, regulating a more independent world. As attitudes change, fears subside, and people are convinced of the need for such a mark. The true mark of the beast will be easily introduced to the world by Antichrist. Very simple. Right, and that leads us straight into one world government, right? Where we already know the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the International Criminal Court, the UN, uh, tons of other agencies are, are on the preliminary steps to the formation of a one world government already. We know that the communication technology is there, the transportation is there, the pro-globalization uh, media it, necessary to usher that in is, is already here. 
uh, the increasing terroristic threats in the Middle East. Um, it, it all leads to the formation of a governing body uh, as fear and promises of better security make more people willing to give up their national sovereignty f for global governance, right? So we are going to spend a ton of time about this. But the important thing is now you're listening and, and you're starting to uh, realize, you need to realize what's going on. You know, pick up pick up some of the news that that uh, is being reported and realize there's a lot of news not being reported, right? Um, but as we discuss these topics in detail, uh, I'll do a review, like I said. And, and remember, the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. People will talk about peace and safety and destruction, uh, and it'll all come on suddenly, like labor pains to a pregnant woman. And that's, like I said, um, in the book of uh, Second Peter, which is, which is where we <laughs> draw a lot from, yeah, you know. So here's another verse for you. Write the, this down. Uh, two verses, John 14, chapter one. Let not your heart be troubled. Right. So First Thessalonians 4:18 comfort one another so now the hope you know the god of hope will fill you with joy and peace and believing and ye may abound in hope through the power of the holy spirit right that's romans chapter 15 so uh what what do we come to find out yeah we have trouble yeah we have worry yeah we're not given more than we can handle right well don't be troubled comfort each other you know uh you have the power to get through this uh, there's there's a lot going on uh you know and your prayer life is is definitely tied to this right so if you don't pray formally and you don't i've already said you know you don't have to you know bless us O lord and these guys you don't have to do, you know hey god it's me i'm here right hey god you know you know pick a family member you haven't prayed for before pray for them all week pray for them all month right encourage uh anyone who's calling for help out spread the word uh, get, pray for emotional support, for patience, for physical, for financial, for emotional needs, for all the unspoken requests, right? Uh, it's, it's very simple and it's very easy and the power of prayer cannot be uh, un, uh, overstated ever. You know, you know, remember, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is the heart that you believe and you're justified, and it's with your mouth that you confess that you're saved. All it takes is one minute. Realize that time is running out. Christ is standing at the door and knocks. Once you accept Christ's promise, your hand is written on the palm of God. Right? We've talked about this a hundred times, a hundred times. Can't be removed. Your Father loves you. Find out who He is. Speak the word. Believe you can do all the things through Christ. The creator of the universe is your dad. How cool is that? He's your father. How cool is that, right? So as we bow our heads, Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for your endless love that was poured out upon all of us sinners when we didn't deserve it. Thank you that you loved us so much that you gave your son Jesus for us. Now, Father, I pray for those who hear these words. I pray you will aid them in realizing their inner strength and power they possess to overcome any obstacle or stronghold in their life. And as we are not promised tomorrow, let us live every day to the fullest in love and appreciation, strength and encouragement, support and compassion for those in need. In Christ's name, amen. All right, so there's a, a, a brief outline that, that we've gone through. We're going to go through more books of the Bible. Um, I'm going to take a, a quick break because I'm going to welcome JB in here. We're going to continue our, our discussion, and we're going to speak about friendship. So... When we be back, JB, will be right with me. Hold on. Thank you and welcome back to The Tongue with Dr. Mike. I'm joined again in studio with JB. Uh, welcome him back from last time. Welcome back, JB. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Good, man. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Uh, so we are going on to... Uh, we had a great lesson just now uh, with uh, continuing on with our, our outline. And now we're going to dive into another topic that you and I can discuss a lot of, that's uh, on a lot of people's minds. And uh, it was brought to my attention. So we're going to talk about friendships. 
Oh, they, that's always a good topic. Good topic, right? Absolutely. So uh, a lot of people have, uh, you know, they're, they're blessed to have. Uh, this is what I found out in life. So either you have a lot of friends um, that you are you're one of those people that have tons of friends that no matter where you are and what circle you're comfortable and then there's the other side where you have one or two good friends that stick with you through life and you know they're on that 20 30 year journey with you um, and no matter what I mean you everybody else that comes around you falls by the wayside and you stick with this one or two people or you have somebody that's just a social butterfly right <laughs> so uh me personally i i've been blessed to have to call a lot of people my friends uh a lot of them have been acquaintances a lot of them you know when you have a good friend as you can tell they're a good friend as if months and weeks uh, they go by and you don't talk and then when you see him again it's like you never you picked up right where you left off yeah right and and the, like nothing changed you know you're both going to be you know that same level of friendship the whole time you don't need to necessarily say it every day or speak every day but what do you think yeah um <clears throat> well i agree uh, i mean sometimes you know life does get in the way and and uh you know real friends understand that um uh, but i also think that uh the the word friend is very loosely used in at least in uh american culture and uh you know before before the age of social media, I think people uh, based their a lot of their not everybody, but I'll say some people a, a good number of people would base their self esteem on how many people they knew or how many people knew them, you know, like a popularity thing. Well, that's what makes social media so well. So there you go. Right? There's the parallel. Right. So now in this digital age of social media. Everybody's like, well, how many friends do you have? Yeah, yeah. How many uh, subscribers do you have? Yeah, how many people follow you? Right? Yeah, and and you know the the thing is though is that uh, you don't. It's not about how many people you know and how many and how many of the people that you quote unquote how many people that you call quote unquote friends are really friends and how many of them are actually acquaintances. Right. Well, that's that's the big difference. Um, and then I have what they call the good time friends. Well, the ones that show up when you're <laughs> when you're doing well and everything's oh, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when everything's fine. That. Yeah. And, you know, everyone's having a good time. They're just hanging out, maybe having a burger with you. And everybody has those friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but when, when things but, are good. But are they actually really friends? That's right. the thing. Well, I, I mean. Uh, are they friends? Are the ones that only come around in good times? No, they're not. They're they're your good time friends, <laughs> you know. But you know, a, a true friend is one that you know sees that you're hurting. It doesn't have to be told that you need something that you're hurting, or or um, and the Bible says bear one another's burdens, right? So you can go to that other person and you can talk to them and lean on them. Just like I said before, when iron sharpens iron. You're bringing your problems to somebody to be encouraged and to be strengthened and to be lifted up, right? And that's a true friendship that where you're both getting something out of your relationship. It's not a one, hey, I'm here for your burger because you're having <laughs> good times, right? Yeah, it's, and I say all the time, I say, you know, you don't need a lot of friends. You need one or two very good friends. You know, a friend that if, if you're in time of need and you call them and they're there, and, and you know, and you can rely on them because they're always there. And in turn, you know, you're that friend to them. And that kind of a friendship is worth way more than a thousand good time friends. Oh, yeah, I agree. For sure. Because if you're stuck on the side of the road somewhere or whatever the case is, and you go to call that good time friend, well, yeah. you're going to be waiting for a while. <laughs> they, they got other good time friends. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So now you know you're true when when things when the rubber hits the road that's where your friends rise up, you know the ones that you call friends, um, you know and it all depends. Everyone's circle is different, um, you know like everyone had a circle in high school and everybody had a circle and if you went to college and everyone has a circle at work, right? Um, and your your friends change throughout your life. That's while well, your acquaintances change throughout. Oh life. yeah. And your friends do too. I mean, I have friends that 
I didn't know for half of my life. And now they've become greater friends than I had, you know, than the great friends I had way back when, you know. I used to think when, when somebody told me when I was growing up and they said, oh, I knew this person for 20 years. And I'm like, wow, are you old? <laughs> like, that's crazy. I know. You know, and now I have friends for 30 years plus. Yeah, it's, that, it is crazy, crazy. Right? So. I'm friends with a couple of people on my Facebook that are from elementary school. Right. And I haven't seen them in like almost But there's that term, years. friends, right? They're, yeah. they're friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. Some of them literally are barely even acquaintances, All right. but I do actually communicate with uh, with some of them, you know. So even though it's a remote, it, it's a remote friendship. I mean, it's 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 hard, you know. It, it that's why the word is so complicated in American culture. Yeah, you know, because uh, I don't know. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. Well, yeah. you have to be careful with you know who you call your friends, and the Bible warns about it too, uh, in a couple spots. And First Corinthians is one, and that says, "Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character." And there's nothing more true than that. Is if you are hanging out with somebody and you're trying to bring goodness to that group, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, like you end up becoming one of that group and they yeah. start bringing you down um and you know what's interesting too so you you know and i'm sure a lot of your a lot of your listeners probably uh, know this old saying too you are the company you keep yeah but you know what's interesting is why why is that always why is that always used in a negative way that could be spun, spun as a positive thing like uh you know if you have very successful people that you're hanging out with well you are the company you keep so the the point I'm making is is uh, one thing that and, and a lot of a lot of motivational speakers will say this kind of stuff. Surround yourself with the people that you want to become like. Right. So if you want to be successful, surround yourself with successful people. And you rise up. Because it all falls back right. to you are the company you keep. That's correct. That's <laughs> yeah, that's good. You know. And the book of Proverbs says also, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. And there, there's a special kind of magic to that. When you're with your good friends and you're with your uh, people you enjoy hanging out with, it's, it's a good feeling. Oh, yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? and, and it's encouraged. And I, you know, the Bible also says, Do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together. And that, that speaks of, you know, going to church. and, and um, Because, you know, I was asked, Do you have to go to church? And... Uh, do you have to go to church? No. But the Bible says, you know, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together. It's the same thing with friends, too. You know what I mean? But the Bible also warns about visiting your neighbors too much and visiting, uh, you know, being there too much. It's good to have distance with your friends also. Um, it's not good to be overbearing, just as a side note. <laughs> well, I can't argue with that. Yeah. Nobody likes an annoying neighbor. Yeah, so what do you think? Uh, let's think about how difficult it is to make friends now, now that the world has changed, right? So now we have a worldwide uh, pandemic going on. Some people in some places are still masked up and they, they have, you know, their whole, uh, like, uh, a body cast on, right? So it's, it's hard to get close and personal. Uh, I have people ask me about dating and dating life and... and it's hard to meet people nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> I can I can imagine. You know, because they don't want to get close and they don't want, you know. It's I really feel I really feel bad for the younger people. You know, cuz like since this all happened, you know, everything closed down, you know, younger people had no places to go. I I don't really care about going out anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm almost 40 now and I kind of like I lived that part of my life out. Yeah. So like I'm I'm fine with staying home, you know. When they told me I couldn't go anywhere, I was like, "Nice, cool. me too." I was That's where I was. This is great. Let me go hide in my hole. I don't yeah. even have to. I don't even have to make an excuse up of why I'm being a hermit. Yeah, <laughs> my inner introvert was was oh. doing somersaults. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, the whole thing with uh, the COVID and the mandates and the masks and you know it's you know what's sad. It made me think of it when you when you brought this up is. I was always one of those people where when I walk down the street and I walk past somebody or someone walks past me, however you want to put it, I always made a point to make eye contact and greet them. 
you know, like, hey, good morning or good afternoon. Right. And it's like, because I'm not, uh, I am not pro mask, so I don't wear my mask whenever, any chance I get, I'm not wearing it. And it's like, now I've gotten to the point where I try to avoid someone if I see that they're masked because I don't want them to get all crazy on me, you know, and freak mm-hmm. out on me. Like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, you should wear your mask. You know, I don't want to deal with that. So I avoid it. So I don't make eye cont. I, I don't make eye contact and I don't greet them. And, yeah. it, and it's sad because that's not the world I want to live in. Well, that's part of the divide and conquer. Yeah. You know, it is to shut people away and, and isolate them. And, uh, you know, and, and me, I, I'm an introvert, but I'm also an extrovert extremely. So depending on what kind of mood I'm in, I'm energized by people. So I'm that guy that goes out and we're talking to people. And I think that's the Greek in you. That could be. You know, <laughs> I hope not. So, so like, but meeting, I've gone out to dinner with, I've gone on dates with people and table, you know, we're sitting at a table and the table next to us complete strangers and and it was close enough that they were here gonna hear everything we said anyway (laughs) so i just grabbed their table and put it next to ours you know (laughs) and we made friends you know that was downtown chicago that was super super fun time for me but you know there's two strangers that i just you know i energized but hey what's your story what what what's your where are you at in life (laughs) you know what i mean what's your walk like and you know that super energizes me i love that stuff but nowadays <laughs> you can't do that and yeah. people look at even i mean if you sneeze or if you cough right now people look at you like you have the plague you know so they don't want to be even if you're not sick and you just sneeze it, you're, you're looked at like an outcast you know i don't you know i, I don't think it it's as bad as it was initially and I, and, I, and there's a lot of people you, you're you're um what you're referring to is, I think, the extreme spec- end of the spectrum. Where I, I, there's a lot of people that are kind of in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that are like me, where I'm not freaking out over every little thing. I'll shake someone's hand if they if they stick their hand out f- for me to shake their hand if they're meeting. Um, and I think there's been a lot of people that eased up on uh, on you know the whole panic, a lot of it. Um, but let's go back pre-COVID. Uh, because I think a lot of it applies to now, uh, as far as like making friends. And I, and I, I got this from a class I took back in high school. Uh, it was a, a life coach. It was like a life guidance class. And they, they taught about all kinds of social, uh, social issues. And one of the classes that he taught, uh, he taught about friendships and, and how to make friendships. And he said, you know, A lot of people say, I don't have any friends or, you know, why don't I have any friends? And he said, he said, if you don't have any friends, try being a friend. And you know what? It sounds basic. It sounds simple, but it's true. Yeah. You know, if if you, maybe you, maybe you work with somebody and, you know, find out, you find out they have car trouble. Well, See if they need a ride. Offer them a ride. You know, take them, you know, maybe pick them up or maybe, you know, give them a ride home or give them a ride to the gas station, something. It it, it can cause um, an inconvenience on your part, but you've now just opened the door to a possible friendship because you've broken that ice. You've broken that barrier. Yeah, that's a good point. I I mean, that's good for (laughs) pre-COVID. I agree. Uh Nowadays, um, I, I think people, it, it's a shame because now the, the way of living has changed and the way everybody not, interacts. But not for everybody, though. Because not for everybody. Uh, I agree. This past, ho- this past Halloween, I was, I was at the beer store. I was grabbing a, a, a case of beer and the lady in front of me, you might know who she is because she does, at Halloween, they give out beers to the parents. I don't know. Well, um, so... I overheard her talking to the the man behind the counter. Oh, you mean a customer was doing that? Yeah. Oh, I do know who you mean. <laughs> so, so she, um, so I said, "Wait a sec, I know where you are because uh, you're the, you're the only house that does that." Yeah, yeah. And she started laughing. And we were chatting. Well, she was getting two cases of beer, so I offered to help 
carry one of them to her car. And she was more than fine with that. She was, she thanked me. I carried it to her car. I put it in her car. Yeah. And so the point I'm getting at here is that not everybody is, is like weirded out, like acting weird and wanting to be in like a bubble, so to speak. It's, I think, and I think as time goes on, I think that's getting a little better. Oh, it is. Some people are just over it, man. And not they're, everybody, they're but just, like you said, just over it. But there are still some people though that are like, "Don't get near me," yeah. you know. And you're gonna have that probably till the end. I, I'm the over it. I'm the over it guy. Was it? I, I'm over it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm done with it. I, I was over it a long, long time yeah. ago. I've, I've had COVID. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm even more over it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So was it Joy Bear? I, I didn't read the article, but. It was a headline saying that she was planning on wearing a mask indefinitely. Yeah, stupid. Oh, good for you. Yeah, dumb. <laughs> go, go wear one to bed, you know, yeah, yeah. if that makes you feel better, but not me. Well, I wonder these people that drive around in their car by themselves with their windows up and they have a mask on. I wonder what goes through their head sometimes. I mean, in their eyes, I mean, I guess they're staying safe from all the germs floating around your car. But, I mean, every time I see it, I just... <laughs> I well, laugh. I'm gonna thing, keep laughing. The, the real comical part about that is the fact that those people clearly don't understand how the mask works. Uh, does the mask work? Well, That's another topic. We'll get it to that later. The, well, <laughs> the, the masks. From what I heard, don't work, and yeah. they've done studies and tests on this. But right. that's for another topic, like yeah, you said. Yeah. But they were claiming before that the mask protects other people from you. Yeah. Vice versa. So wearing the mask in the car with the windows up by themselves, what is it doing? Yeah. Is it protecting their dashboard? Yeah, like, maybe. I, I don't understand. Yeah, like, but, but see, that goes to show you that the people don't even really understand what they're doing. They're just doing it. They're just doing. And that's scary. That part's yes. scary. And another thing, and now this, I totally don't, I don't understand this one bit. Someone said, oh, sometimes I just forget. I forget that it's on. Yeah, right. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. How do you forget that that yeah. thing is on covering your nose and your mouth? Yeah. I, I don't care how long yeah. you've been wearing a mask. Like, I, I, I pull that thing down any chance I get. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy to me. You know, not crazy to them. Crazy to me. But, you know, uh, that's... It, it's different for everybody. And, and, like, yeah, I'm over it, but the people next to me... To me, I mean... I have, uh, my son plays sports now, and the parents go out, none of the parents wear masks there. My kids play, none of the kids wear masks. Um, and we talk like nothing's happened, you know? Yeah. I mean, have people gotten sick? Yeah. Have people not gotten sick? Yeah. Um, did I think differently before I got COVID? Yeah, maybe. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, maybe that's part of it, <laughs> you know? But... Um, you know, I think that the masks were used as a tool, as an instrument of fear. I know we talked about fear in the previous episode, and uh, it kind of applies again, too, because uh, the the masks were like, the masks served as a reminder. Oh, we're in a pandemic. Because yeah. if you took the masks away, there's times where you wouldn't even know. Well, because we weren't really in a pandemic, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> um, but see, it's like, so I said this a long time ago. Because we started, at my job, we started rebelling probably over a year ago in regards to the masks. We just got tired of it. And a lot of the people, they had their masks down by their chin, they, you know, including myself. Yeah. We just, because we were tired of wearing this mask all day at work. And everyone was carrying on, you know, since they called us back to work, everyone is like working in each other's armpits because that's how the, the production line is set up. Everyone's in very close proximity. So yeah. we're already violating all these, you know, six foot rules and everything else. Um, and I said, well, you know, if you took away the masks and you look around, nothing really changed. Everybody's working alongside each other. I mean, yeah. it's like I said, the, the restrictions were all out the window. <laughs> but anyways, that's another topic. Sorry for. No, that's fine. And, you know, they, they've, they've done they've done a lot of studies on. You know uh, why the government chose, uh, and I'm not going to get into that now. But you know, <clears throat> excuse me, putting the mask on and taking your identity away, and um, you know that crosses the bridge into religion, and so certain religions have certain people cover their masks and their face, and uh, 
We'll get into that as well, but I mean, it's all connected. Uh, so if you look, step back and look at the bigger picture and, and the way things uh, are sent out, I mean, for me, you get a vaccine. Uh, what do you care if I wear a mask? If you're vaccinated, what do you care? Yeah. Right? Let's have a vaccine and protects you. Uh, you know, that's just me in the way I think. Well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not the smartest dude, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but that's how did we get on that? So let's go back. Yeah, to friendship. I know. Let's go back to friendship because <laughs> so, we can we could spend another couple of hours talking about all this stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure you, you know we will. But <laughs> <clears throat> it all goes back to you know how you make friends now in this this society now where half the population is terrified and half the population doesn't give a crap anymore. You know, and so how do you how do you bridge that gap? Yeah, how do you? I think you know. I think, I think more has stayed the same than changed. You know, and I, you know, like yes, it's it's harder, uh, and yes, there are some people who who are authentic are genuinely afraid, but I, I think now more than ever, people people always long for relationships, friendships, uh, intimacy, and well, not there's, like there's romantic. a lot there's a lot of loneliness now. Yeah. I will say that. And I think that I think people are going to be more receptive now than ever, you know, to 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 do an act of kindness. I mean, I, I, unless you're like literally like sneezing and coughing all over the place, I, I don't think I think people are going to be receptive to a kind act, you know, holding a door for somebody, um, going out of your way to greet them. Yeah. Uh, little little things offering to carry someone's bag, you know, not long after the the whole quote unquote pandemic started, I was reluctant to do that because I knew so many people were so weirded out about anyone touching their stuff. For sure. But now, now that things have relaxed a little bit, I, like it was a while, it was a while ago that it was around Halloween time where I offered that lady, you know, to, to, to carry her, her uh, case to the car. Now I could have, she could have easily said no, right. but you know, she said, "Sure, thank you." You know, right. and there you go. But do you think people want to get back to normal? Well, they do, but I think. Do you think that you know? Let's say you shake hands with somebody, and you know, you meet them, you shake their hand like you used to. Uh, how many of those people go sit in their car and then sanitize their hand? How many of those people are there? What do you think? Um, <laughs> maybe there's a lot. You know, yeah. you know, and but then again, those people existed too before COVID. You know the the germaphobes, yeah. You know the germ freaks, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And I and I can't fault them a hundred percent because I get it because, you know, I I was I'm not a germaphobe, yeah. but I do understand them. I get it because you don't know how clean that person is, especially if they're a stranger. You don't know how you know what when how frequently they wash their hands. I mean, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in the bathroom and people go in. And don't wash their hands. Yeah, that's true too. Especially after you know going number two. Uh, how do we get here? That is, <laughs> that is the grossest. Uh, yeah, that's another topic for another day. So, so yeah. So as far as people sanitizing their hands, I don't know. It's but yeah, I, 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 I think more now though. Uh, two years into this, I think people. I think more people than not want things to go back to normal i, I agree. think they want to I, I they want to they want to return to uh socializing with people again and just being human again especially if you turn on the tv and look at sports arenas filled with thousands of people with no mask on it just yeah. looks like a normal day of life the way it used to be and you know you back know? you know a while back when they were requiring sports uh kids athletes to wear masks while playing sports i thought that was totally disgusting yeah it was they had i mean they're playing a sport for crying out loud and you're making them wear a mask while running around (laughs) i just i couldn't believe that i i feel like that was like a form of like abuse yeah oh that's like i said we can we can go on about that and i'm sure we will we'll have we'll go on <laughs> the, this this pandemic has opened up so many topics for us to to talk about cuz everybody feels uh, you know one way or the other on it there's really no in between uh it, you know but you know making friends is, is the way it was before a, a little bit easier <laughs> nowadays maybe a little bit uh a little bit more difficult but uh you know the bible says you know uh 
a friend loves at all times and a, a brother is born in times of adversity or four times of adversity so lean on each other build each other up uh, the importance of, of having good friends and being a good friend uh, is monumental and universal. What do you think? I think so too. And I also think that everybody, if you're if you're out there listening and you think, ah, I, I wish I had some friends, I don't have any friends, just keep this in mind. You're a friend away from having a friend. True. Um, yeah, that's true. Go out there and be someone's friend. And I'm telling you, there's people out there just like you that are lonely that that really wish they had companionship and i think that uh now more than ever uh the reception will be will be greatly welcomed i agree that's a good point and that'll uh just about wrap us up for another edition of uh the tongue was speaking with jb and and you know what thank you jb again for joining me oh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh we we kind of went all around friendship and <laughs> we'll uh we'll uh we always circle to that though. yeah that's yeah we always circle back and that's the important thing <laughs> keep your questions coming keep your comments coming thank you for listening god bless you have a great day